Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can turn a photo that was shot in fall or autumn into one that looks as if it was shot in spring. And you're doing all of this in Photoshop. Before we get into this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to achieve. Let's have a look at the original image we'll be working with, which is this one here. It was shot in Paris in autumn and the trees have autumn colours in them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make this image look a whole lot more like it was shot in spring summer. The leaves on the trees are more green yellow than they are yellow brown and the sky is a bit brighter too. So you're going to see how you can easily create this effect without having to make complex selections in Photoshop. To get started, I'm going to select both the layers that are applying these effects to the image and just drag them onto the trash can. So we're going to start out with the original image. And first off, we're going to deal with the yellow leaves. And to do that, I'm going to use a selective color adjustment. Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Selective Color and click OK. Now the reason why I'm using selective color is that it allows me to isolate specific colors in the image and to adjust them. And the colors that we're looking for are the sort of yellows and reds, the colors that are in the leaves. And we're going to take the yellows and we're going to move them a little bit more towards green. To do this, you need to know a little bit about these colors here cyan, magenta and yellow because each of these is the opposite to one of the other colors red, green and blue. Cyan is the opposite of red, magenta is the opposite of green and yellow is the opposite of blue. So if I'm working in the yellow channel and I drag the yellow slider towards yellow in a positive direction here, I'm going to add more yellow to the yellows. But if I drag in a negative direction, then I'm going to add the opposite color, which is blue. And so my yellows are going to start looking a little bit more bluish. And something similar is going to happen here in the magenta green channel. Dragging to the right will add magenta to the yellow areas of the image, but dragging to the left will add green to the yellow areas of the image. And you can see how this might help us create some of our spring color. And for the cyan slider, that's going to take us between cyan blue in one direction and red in the other. Autumn or fall on one end of the scale and a little bit more like spring on the other end of the scale. So for now, I'm just going to adjust these sliders in the direction I want to take them. For the cyan slider, I'm going to add a little bit of cyan blue to my yellows. And for the magenta green slider, well, I'm headed towards the greens. And the yellow slider, more yellow. Now this is way too much color and also it's affecting some of the building. But we're going to see how to adjust that back shortly. Let's go to the reds because the reds are also part of this leaf detail. And again, I'm going to adjust the magenta in the red area and I want to take it more towards green. And I want to take the yellows more towards yellow. And cyan's in the magenta more towards cyan. If you're unsure which direction to drag these sliders, just try both ways and you know what you're looking for. You're looking for a more yellow green and if you don't get it, try the other direction. So I'm just going to close that down and as I said, this is way too much of an effect, but I'm going to limit it first of all by turning off that layer and let's go and select some of the colors that we do want to affect, leaving out the colors that we don't. Now I'm not a big fan of making complex selections, so I'm going to show you an easy way to do this. With this layer selected and the selective color layer turned off, I'm going to choose select and then color range because color range allows me to select colors in the image that I want to affect. So I'm setting this to sampled colors, which allows me to click on an area of the image and make this the color I'm selecting. So that I can add to my selection, I'm going to click this Add to Sample button. And now I can go and click on those areas that I want to select. 
Now I'm not going to be able to get everything here to start with so I'm just going to settle for a pretty good range of these yellowy colors in the image and I can come out here and select some of these as well. Now if I select localize color clusters I might be able to remove some of the building behind and just limit the selection to the areas that I'm actually clicking on. And I may also want to adjust range so that again I'm just getting the areas that I'm interested in and not everything in the image because this is going to save me making a selection later on. When I'm pretty happy with that I'm just going to click OK and you'll see the marching ants in the image. Let's turn back on our selective color layer. Let's click on our mask here and what we want to do now is to fill not the selected area but the other area of the image with black. So I'm going to choose Select Inverse and that's going to invert my selection and since black is my foreground color I'm going to press Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac to fill my mask with black color in all the areas except those I had selected. Now as I said it's not a perfect selection but I'm not worried about that right now. Select, deselect will turn off the selection. You can see that we've missed quite a bit of this ready color through the image. Well let's go back and get the original image and let's go back and select this color. It may be a bit easier this time to select this using the magic wand tool. I have the magic wand tool tolerance set to about 10 and I'm going to start clicking on these color areas of the image, shift clicking to add to them and being careful really just to select these sort of ready areas in the image. And if I go too far at any point I'm just going to undo the last step that I made. Now once I've selected on pretty much the redder areas of the image it would behove me to probably increase the area around these selections. So I'm going to choose Select and then Modify and then Expand. And I'm going to expand this by two pixels which means that any of these little selections here is going to grow a little bit more to surround the pixels around it. So I'll click OK. And you can see here that I'm getting a pretty good selection. So I'm going to click back on this layer here and click back on the mask. Now I can't fill the mask the way I did before because otherwise I'm going to lose my original mask but I can paint on it. And what I want to do is to paint on these selected areas with white so that we're seeing the detail on this layer. So I'm going to switch to white paint, I'm going to pick up my paintbrush tool and because I have a mask in place I can just start painting over these areas and they're automatically added to the mask. And because I'm just painting here over the top of a selection I'm not going to go outside the selected area so that's saving me from a lot of sort of over painting if you like. And when I'm done I'm just going to press Control D or choose Select, Deselect. So this is a pretty good result here. There is however just a little bit of green leaking into the building. Well I'm going back to my mask here. I've got my selection turned off so now I'm going to go to black paint again with my soft brush and I'm just going to paint out those areas where the green color has leaked into the buildings. And this is not rocket science because I don't need to be particularly careful, I just need to not paint over the tree. I'm just doing a little bit of touch up here just to try and make sure that I keep some of my sort of correct color in areas of the image that are not covered by leaves. And once I've got that result now I can go back to my selective color layer and I can just adjust the result. So let's go here and let's try and get some of this blue out of these areas. There's way too much cyan in here. So I'm just going to adjust these values down in the red and the yellow channel. 
So I want a more spring-like look to my image, sort of spring, summer. And at any time, if I say any portion of the image that could use a little bit extra work, I'm just going to click on my mask, I'm going to click on my brush and then add the appropriate colour. I'll add white if I want to bring some of these leaves in. I'm just going to size down my brush and just gently brush over them. Again, I'm not being particularly careful about my brush strokes. I just need to get something over that sort of leaf area. But it's not a very, very careful painting effect because it just doesn't need to be. But I certainly will do that for any of the big leaves that I'm seeing that are sort of left out of this effect. So having done that, let's have a look then at how we would attack the sky. And for the sky, I'm going to use a hue saturation adjustment layer because that will allow me to look at the sky independently of the rest of the image. So I'll choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and this time we're going to choose Hue Saturation. Because again, we can isolate channels in the image here. So we're going to go down here and isolate the blues and then the cyans. And for the blue channel, I want to ignore hue. I don't want to be playing around with hue because that's going to be pretty destructive in that it's going to make the blues a different color. So typically I probably wouldn't want to adjust hue, but I do want to adjust the saturation. And I may want to adjust the lightness, perhaps darken the blues in the sky. And having done blues, let's go to cyans because the sky will hold quite a bit of cyan in it too. So again, increasing the saturation, being really aware that it's affecting this roof line here, but knowing that I can fix that in a minute. And then having a look at lightness as well. So having done that, we have a mask on this layer as well. And we can use that to paint out the detail that we don't want to lose in the building. And again, this is a really simple painting job making sure that I'm painting with black. I've got my nice soft brush. I'm just going to paint over this building and I don't need to be particularly careful because there's no really, really detailed edges here. Just going to make sure that I get these parts of the building through here. And the only thing I'm going to zoom in for is this area here. So it is a very, very small area and it does need to be knocked out of that mask. So again, I'm just going to touch around that, make sure I've got all these areas as I'm in here. And I can check that in a minute when I go back out. I can just turn this layer on and off to just see if there is any of this color that's bleeding into areas that I don't want it to bleed into. You can see that I'm not needing to be very detailed with my brush. I'll press Control-0 to go back out of the image. And here is my blue sky on and off. And it's not visibly affecting other areas of the image, so I'm not worried about that. It looks like a pretty good fix there. And here is my green trees. So very simply, we've been able to turn an image that was shot in autumn or fall in Paris and make it look as if it is taken in Paris in spring, summer. And we've done that using a selective color adjustment layer for the greens to turn the yellowy reds in the image into greens, and then a hue saturation adjustment layer to fix the skies. And we haven't needed to do a lot of detailed masking I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.